Miramax Films is proud to present one of the most celebrated motion pictures of the year. The winner of the 1994 Palme d'Or. The best picture of the Cannes Film Festival. Come on, let's get in character. What do we think of Quentin Tarantino's like weird obsession, obsession with the N-word? Yeah, I know that's a weird... Oh, he wanted the niggas, though. You know, we okay with him. He, he fine, yeah. you know. <laughs> he signed... Okay, okay. Ted signs off on it. Yeah. Sam Jackson signs off on it. Right. I always tell people, uh, I don't understand why they can't look at his work and realize that for him to write characters like that for me would be impossible for a racist to do. Here's the th- Like, there, there are plenty of people... I feel like that. Like I could argue that a it is was, racist to a degree. A nigga was putting his mama through the matches when he, he could hear it. What's <laughs> he, he, he 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 had to go through it. No, I I don't I don't find it insincere with him. That's the weird thing. Like I, I find it insincere when he fucking code switches. He does code switch. Yeah, which is it's so really awkward. Cringe. Well, I want to I want to please my fans and I want to please the critics that are my fans. Uh, the critics hate my fans. I don't give a damn. <laughs> what do you think of uh what do you think of um uh Tarantino code switching? I don't know if you've seen it. I mean I would have to show it like like him going on B E T. I appreciate it, you know. Yeah. It's like the uh, Obama shit. It's like weird the handshake. <laughs> I think it, I think he's I think he's weirdly sincere because I think he yeah, I think he probably did spend like his early youth around a lot of like his wife I mean sorry, not his wife, his his mom. His wife. Like, his wife. His wife is getting piped down by black yeah. guys. Probably. <laughs> and he's that's why he likes black guys so much. Because yeah. well, they pleasured his wife better than he no, ever could. No, because they pleasured his mom. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, according to him, this is through the matches. Tarantino, he dated well uh she dated Walt Chamberlain for like two years. <laughs> yeah, I believe you know that shit. he got room with what, ten thousand bodies? Yeah. He and he like what, oh, twenty thousand. He's Easy. seven foot tall, right? Mm-hmm. He put your mama through the mattress. Seeing, seeing that photo of Will Chamberlain, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Andre the Giant does sort of lend credence to the idea that Arnold Schwarzenegger isn't that fucking tall. He isn't. <laughs> I mean, at least when I Have saw him. Have you seen him, that photo? What? It's, it, hang on, I'll I show don't, it to you. I don't remember the photo, but I think I've seen it. Yeah. I must have. Shout out to Quentin Tarantino, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. But he uses the N-word a lot, and people get really angry at it. Who fucked them? <laughs> Like, like, look at that shit. I'm showing him the photo right you? now. Is that, is that, wait, who, wait. It's okay. Wilt. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger in the middle. Yeah. Oh, wow. I yeah, he looks like him. a fucking Oompa Loompa. I have not seen this photo. <laughs> I'm stupid. It's from one of the Conan movies. Oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah. The second one? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I haven't seen that one. Um, Conan the Destroyer. No, but like, um, I really love... Um, Conan the Annihilator. Conan the uh, anal violator. Yeah, no, it, Quentin Tarantino's, uh, yeah, he just has, his, he has weird obsessions, and one of them is black people. <laughs> and we love it. And we love it. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, and he did keep us in Hollywood. I mean, I love work. it. Keep us in work. I mean, like, Jackie Brown's a really awesome movie. Jackie Brown is a good movie, That yeah. now that I've revisited it a And same with times. Django Unchained. When I saw Django Unchained. I love Django. It was so fucking sick. When Django- I saw, like, Go oh my God. Like, I watched that. Because like I didn't like Inglorious Bastards that much the first time I saw really? it. Really, oh, I didn't. I love Inglorious Bastards. It was like a little dialogue heavy, and there's a lot of subtitles. And when I was watching it in the theater, I remember like my eyes kind of draining out. It, it it felt to me like the 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 perfect half and half between like his the, sort of what he was doing with Kill Bill and Jackie Brown, which is like the female led, like you know, action drama. And then, like, the ensemble thing of, like, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. It's like, oh, no, I you got half it. of each movie in one. I liked it a lot. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I like it more now that I've seen it more. What is it, Dawn the Dust or some shit? Oh, Dust oh from Dust Till Dawn. Dawn. That, wasn't, that wasn't Quentin Tarantino, though. That, he, he wrote it. He acted in it, but he wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, um, no, but I, what I really like about um, Django Chain though, was I remember, like, being in the theater. I, I remember loving it the whole way through. I was like so down for this movie because it was such an it was such a weird it's like his hero's journey movie and the I was squibs the fucking blood fucking squibs, squibs. The, like the, the explode oh. like ten feet into the fucking air very well oh, I yeah. love that shit uh, Jim Croce like what the, what's his name C R O C E Croce 
cro- and it's I, Croce, I carry yeah. it with me like my daddy did. Like these you didn't weird know how to fucking needle drops. Croce? Is it Croce? It's Croce. Oh, I thought it was Croce or something. Croce. <laughs> or Croce. <laughs> <laughs> or Croce, I don't know. Jim Croce. It can be a, oh, it can be a K dead. or it can be an S. That's the way C's work. <laughs> Hateful Eight. I mean, I didn't like Hateful Eight that much. Hateful Eight was awesome. Uh, yeah, Hateful Eight, Hateful Eight I, I wasn't it. as into, but I do like it a lot. I watched that probably one of the most recently. Like, no. yeah. Hateful Eight is... The one that I wasn't man. as into was Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Wait, really? Oh, no, that really? Was too. That because was... it didn't have a fucking plot. And that was really just like the biggest problem. And also because I was given fake spoilers for the movie. Oh. I saw fake spoilers either on 4chan or some fucking website that said that the movie ended with Manson and the, the Manson family taking Sharon Tate hostage, right? Yeah. And then fucking Cliff and, and you know, like Brad Pitt and Leo go to, go to fucking save her or whatever. And yeah. they bring Bruce Lee with them. That would have been amazing. And they, they, there's a fucking full-on kung fu fight. <laughs> between Bruce Lee and, and the Manson gang, and then fucking Sharon Tate. And here's the thing. They sort of set this up in the movie by showing Sharon Tate having a scene with Bruce Lee training mm-hmm. to fight. Like, Sharon Tate literally, like, kicks Manson's head off. Oh, at the shit. end or some shit. Wait, Manson like, wasn't even there. Exactly, but that's what makes it fucking awesome. It's right. like just completely fabricating this this event and and saying, oh yeah, this is what happened. Whatever the fuck. I do like that movie. Yeah. Um, I did. I did feel a little. I don't know. I felt a little like peeved by it. Yeah. Because it's like, really, are we doing like the like the historical revenge thing again? Yeah. I've seen it like four times already, Quentin. But he, he what, what he Inglorious Bastards he did that and besides he that, did that but also like I guess he kind of did it in Django and Chained a little bit but like I don't know it just felt no, like I'm, like that's that's that, that exists in, in its own sort well, of the fact that he did it twice felt a little I don't know like I, I felt like it's like really we're doing this again man I don't know it just it, it I didn't think me. that much of it I thought that like you know them him doing the the deviation from from right. real events was actually kind of cool there's a spider crawling behind ah, your head. Ah, ah. Oh no, it's not even that big. <laughs> um, no, I really liked. Um, I killed a spider that was around that size not too long ago. It was in the bathroom when I was trying to shit. I really liked um, Django and Chained a lot. I never kill them usually. Wait, we... <laughs> Don't worry about the spider. It's fine. <laughs> this is now a Quentin Tarantino spotlight episode. I guess I want to talk about Django and Chained. I, I oh, yeah. loved that movie when I first saw it. I was so stoked for it because yeah. I thought the needle drops were all good. The pacing was fucking amazing. I yeah. thought, like, all every scene was keeping drugs, me in. Um, I thought it was as good as any movie he's ever... King. Yeah. He had a horse. But the thing is, I was coming off from... My first movie I saw by Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. was Kill Bill, mm-hmm. volume one. In the theater. Same, but not in the theater. And I fucking... I, I think that might have changed my entire life, that whole movie. I believe that. That's that's my favorite of his. Yeah. Because, like, when oh, she's... Was the first one I saw. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I saw Reservoir Dogs after that, and maybe Pulp Fiction. I might have seen it before that. I don't know. Like, like I might have. I remember not knowing who Quentin Tarantino was when I saw the trailer. Right. Yeah. And I thought he was like some Italian guy. But like, you're not wrong. When um, when I uh, well, I thought he was like from Tarantino. I thought he was from Italy. Mamma mia! But I never seen like the fourth film. I remember that really clearly too. It's like the fourth film by this guy. Oh like, yeah, oh. like they're marketing all of his movies as like yeah. I being thought that so was cool. special. I thought that was sick. But um, this is an event, bitch. Also, that fucking trailer though. Yeah. And the thing is, like, it had it had footage from one and two, like the first trailer I saw. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was like it seemed like it was filmed everywhere, like all around the world, and there was so much going on was? in that fucking trailer. I was just, I was so happy when I went to go see Volume One, though. Um, I remember when she starts, when Uma Thurman starts cutting through, like eighty-eight dudes, the crazy, the eighty-eight, crazy eighty-eights, which I think is only like maybe like sixty or seventy. I yeah, forget it's the not, exact number. Like they, they literally, that's a line in the second movie. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, it wasn't actually eighty-eight guys exactly. It felt like it though. It felt like it. It, it felt still like more 50 than that. fucking guys it, at least. And when their blood is spraying everywhere, and it's just mayhem and cartoonish violence, I was like, you can do that? The, the bloods, the anime blood sprays. 
Yeah. I, as a nine-year-old kid, I lost my fucking mind. I was so oh, happy. Yeah. Cause it was like, oh, finally, movies are good. <laughs> finally, movies are good. Yeah, you've like, never seen a good movie up well, to was, that point. I never saw a movie give me like what I didn't know I wanted. Right. And the okay, thing is, yeah. even before that, I was so down with the movie because it was like there's so many homages going on, and I didn't know any of the homages at the time. I didn't know what he was like riffing on, but right. I understood that he was riffing on something. Yeah. And I thought my I didn't need my dad to explain that to me. I was like, oh, he's riffing on some movie. But it's also like a movie that like is super obscure, mm -hmm. so it's like it doesn't matter that he's riffing on it. Exactly. And I I I um I kind of I just I just got it. I understood it like I understood exactly what he was doing, and I thought it was sick. Um, very sick. So Django Unchained when he starts shooting up the fucking um place, <laughs> I remember the the part where I really just like my heart fucking like I, I was just so happy. Yeah. Is when the guy's like coming out. He's like oh help me and like he fucking dives backwards yeah and he shoots the two guys keeping guard as he's diving in backwards like yeah. some fucking like matrix shit yeah that's when i was like oh thank god we have kill bill again well that was there so. There was stuff there were moments like that in inglorious bastards where like they when they recruit <laughs> when they recruit hugo stiglitz in like the fucking like the, oh, yeah. the whatever jail he's in, and they're like running by, shooting the fucking the, the guards really fast and shit. <laughs> like all sneaky, even though they're they're blasting like the loudest fucking guns you've ever heard in your life. Oh my god! Wait, wait, wait! Sorry, sorry. <sighs> I'm not repeating myself, so we can That's move okay. on. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. I got a bad fucking leg cramp all of a sudden. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, you still want to use the chair? Owie. Oh, owie. <laughs> if you heard me rustling around, that was because, uh, yeah, I had a bad owie. I had a cramp in the back of my knee. Fuck, that hurt. <laughs>